Welcome to The Creative Influencer, where we discuss all things creative with an emphasis on influencers. The Creative Influencer is hosted by John Pfeiffer. John is an entertainment attorney in Santa Monica, California, who represents influencers and other creatives. This is episode two of the fifth season of the Creative Influencer Podcast. Today, we interview Rebecca Hulse. Rebecca is a speaker and author who is in the business of change. She recently published the book, Rebellious Rituals, a personal development guide for creatives to nurture their work and themselves through routines that help foster their creative process. Rebecca shares some of the lessons and insight she has learned on her journey traveling the world, coaching thousands of creatives, on finding success in their work. Enjoy. I am joined today by Rebecca Halls. Thank you. Thank you for coming on to the podcast. My pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Uh, You are the author of Rebellious Rituals, which we'll get into. Um, uh, And I'll even do a little blurb so it shows up. (laughs) <laughs> um, you are from New Zealand, true? Yes. And you are, we talked about it before we started the interview, that that's where you are now. Yes, I am. I'm in Christchurch, New Zealand, my hometown. And because of that, I didn't realize the time difference. So <laughs> we are 7.30 a.m. your time. Good morning, if you're listening to this in the morning. <laughs> yes. In L.A. time, we are 12.30. So Very there's simple. a little bit of a... Uh, <laughs> A difference. So how would you describe your occupation? I would say I'm in the business of change. And what set you down that path? Uh, that I love change. <laughs> 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 Believe it or not, even when my own mind and control freak habits get in the way, I still love and prefer change over anything else. Which I'm going to go out of order how the, how I prepared this because I subscribe to your newsletter. Oh, the email that just came in two days ago was about the change that COVID brought you. It, oh yes, <laughs> a little happy anniversary moment. <laughs> yes, how would you describe uh, your COVID moment? Um, quiet, deafeningly quiet. Have you been in New Zealand the entire time? Uh, for COVID, yes. Before that, no. <laughs> you were, before that, uh, from what I read, you were a traveler. Yes. I was putting on live, in-person, personal development and business conferences all around the world. And then before that, I was traveling on cruise ships. So I had been basically nonstop traveling and working since, you know, for 10 years. And then it stopped. And then it stopped (laughs) and I had to figure out how to live my life again. (laughs) How was, how, what what was the first thing you did? I slept. (laughs) (laughs) I really Uh, did. I never knew that I was that tired, but this is the, the wonderful and amazing things about our bodies is that they want to serve us. They want to do what we want to do. They want to provide that contribution. And so I never thought I had a problem. And that was what was so surprising to me is like when you you go around the world and you're teaching and you're living in these tools and you think, yeah, everything's great. There's nothing's a problem here. And then you get home and you get quiet and all of a sudden you're like, oh, (laughs) oops, I actually have been taking more than I have been giving. Um, Earlier, you said you were on cruise ships. Uh, You may not remember this, but your first YouTube video is from a uh, room on a cruise ship. It was on oh, the yeah. Jewel of the Seas in February of 2013. <laughs> you have done some good research, <laughs> my friend. I think I do remember that video. I had like affirmations up on the wall. Um, How did it come yeah. to be you were on a, a, a cruise ship long enough to do YouTube videos? So, sorry, that question. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, I, <laughs> What happens is I set paper down on the speakers. I have a MacBook Pro and the microphone is right below the speaker. So so how did it come to be that you were on a cruise ship for your first YouTube video? 
So my parents had always told me that you should go after your dreams. You should go big. You should do whatever it is you want to do. And because they were smart and savvy business people and knowing me as the princess I am, they also said, you can do whatever you want to do, but also you might want to run a business <laughs> so that you actually have a second income stream. So I wanted to be a professional dancer. I wanted to travel the world. So cruise ships were one of the things that I set my heart after. And I went and I achieved that. But then as I was starting to get closer to that goal and it was actually really happening, things got a lot easier and I'm not good with free time. I, I get bored and then I destroy everything. So I got this space of free time and I was like, well, I better start learning about business. And what I was learning was that you have to use your capacities and your gifts in order to create a really great business. And this is, you know, 10 years ago now. So um, this was before all of the courses of do what you love and the money will come. Um, but I had been raised on personal development of almost to the point of being a junkie. So I started teaching some of the tools that I knew about goal setting and mindset and working with energy. And I was on the cruise ship in my free time on the cruise ship, creating my personal development, my coaching business. And that's how you found that way back when retro Rebecca video. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, which leads us to the book. What led you to the title, Rebellious Rituals? Well, this was actually workshopped with a dear friend of mine, Mara Marie, who is a fellow business coach. And we were trying to get to the essence of what I wanted because what, what I knew that the book was and what I was creating was a rebellion to meditation. It was a rebellion to all wait, of wait, the Wait, 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 a meditation break. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's not my thing. And this is not, <laughs> this is not a dig on meditation, but it is a dig on that. If you find a tool and it doesn't work for you, it's not you that's wrong. And I had spent years making myself wrong for trying to fit into this high vibration, spiritual life. And like the sassy part of my mind would not ever shut up and go, yeah, right. And I had, to, I realized that I needed to find some tools that actually suited me. And I did, but this entire book was based on the premise that you have to find the tools that work for you and you're allowed to say screw you to all the tools that don't work. So the title is Rebellious Ritual because it's about saying screw you to everything outside, all the tools that don't work and starting saying yes to what does work. And we'll get, I'm going to dive into the book in a second, but one of the resources on your website was a, a worksheet and kind of the instructions on start in the right place guide. Mm -hmm. that uh, I pulled and I looked at, and it is great. If you are a budding influencer, yes. this would be a great way to identify uh, your audience. So I wanted to call that out, that that's free on the website. It, it is. It, it's it's a, a mistake time. almost that that's free <laughs> on the website because that's my signature process that I take. I take coaches and healers and, you know, all of the weird, wonderful people that are creative that want to share a gift in the world, I take them through that process. So yes, that is free on my website and it's actually insane. <laughs> and one of the, th I'm going to pick up on the word weird because one of the very first exercises you have in the book is to start a weird list. I do. Why a weird list? So first we're going to get geeky and then we're going to get into energy. So to get geeky first, a lot of the dictionary definitions started changing to become more colloquial around 1946. So if you pick up a dictionary before there, you will see that the definition of weird means of fate, spirit, and destiny. Which I, you know, if you just get a sense of the energy when we're talking about this, it's almost this acknowledgement of, oh yeah, that feels more congruent. So I'm very big on using energetically correct words. So then when it comes to creating a weird list, everything that we think is weird, is different, is unlike other people, is actually a huge gift about us. But most of the time, we don't acknowledge it. Like if you feel like you're being told that you're flighty or flaky, maybe it's that you actually have the ability to change easily. You know, and I talk about some of my own personal examples in, in this section in the book, but this is actually not about my examples. It's about looking at what you have that you've been judging as weird or wrong 
about you and taking that and empowering yourself to look at what's actually the capacity here. You have, uh, to that point, you have an Instagram post that says, this is quote, everything, liter literally everything you think is a weakness about you is one of your greatest strengths. Yes. Um, what do you mean and what are yours? What I mean is that everything you are is created by you. And so you may have decided or defined something as being a weakness, but is that actually true or is that just your judgment of where you're at today? And my challenge, my invitation to you would be to actually start to look at those and look at what's actually the capacity underneath this. And that's a really good question that you can use. You asked about some of mine, um, yeah. control would definitely be one of them. Um, but one of the things that I've learned is instead of trying to control to create a result, I try and use my control for capacities to create something beyond what I could expect. So I try to leave an open space at the end of whatever I'm trying to contain, manage for, for it to surprise and delight me. Um, so it's not really a smooth transition, but it's a transition I'm going to make. Okay, we'll do it. <laughs> You, you talked about morning questions. You said that something your dad did. Yes. You actually laminated shower questions. I so, have. <laughs> I, I have. Does it work I, better if you laminate pretty... your shower questions? Well, I mean, my dad had these pages and he would walk, like he would go for his morning walk, rain or shine with these pieces of paper and they would, they would always get wet. And I saw that and I was like, this is not very, I mean, first it's like, it's not ergonomic to look down at a piece of paper while you're walking. Like, I thought that was insane, but I did get eventually the concept. And I was like, where's the place I'm gonna be every day? And I was like, it's my shower. You know, other people, they love their shower for getting ideas, but I was never one of those person that the shower was my place of ideas. So I was like, let me turn this into a place of productivity of creating the energy I wanna have for my day. So I stuck a list of questions up there and I laminated them so that they stay good in the shower and it works. It's there every day. You still have that practice? I still have it in practice. I did it this morning. Uh, tell us a couple of the questions on your laminated shower sheet. Okay, there's ones like, who am I today and what grand and glorious adventure can I have? That's actually the end question. I'm gonna start with the end. That's the last one I, I did. Another one is a prompt to let go of yesterday. It's actually an access consciousness clearing. Um, but what it is, it's about destroy and uncreate everything you were yesterday. So it's saying let go of the past, start afresh. Don't carry your past into your future. And I love clearings like this just to remind you to choose afresh. Which does lead us into a better transition. Your okay. just leap ritual. Okay, yes. For, for those following along in their cheat sheet, that's on page 49 of the book. <laughs> I love that what? cheat sheet. <laughs> what is your, uh, your just leap ritual? So this ritual is about, you know, that place where you kind of want to jump forward into something, but your brain is overthinking or you're starting to get anxious or you know that there's more for you, but you haven't been able to access that yet. This is a ritual designed to support you for me to be your friend as you actually make a big choice because we're we're taught to choose as little as possible and i personally think that's scary and for me the more empowered you are the easier it is for you to make choices and so during this ritual and what we're actually exploring here energetically is just the art of making choices and having your own back with those choices. Why do you think we're taught to choose as little as possible? Well, first, one of the concepts that we're taught super young is the either or concept. You can have this or you can have this, which is not true because we live in an abundant universe where there is many different possibilities. But if you're taught to only look at binary choices, then you can never start to actually look at, okay, what are all the possibilities here? Because you think you can only handle two and you can only have one of those, you can't have both of those. So that's just one small example. And then the other thing is that we're taught that every single choice is extremely meaningful and that if you get this wrong, you've got it wrong and therefore it's done forever. Not that, okay, 
this created some more awareness. You're, you're now in a different place to where you were before the choice. Now what choice do you want to make? So with those two concepts, it's very paralyzing to be able to make a choice. So this is the antithesis of this, where it's like, no, choose all the time so that you're stronger at it, you trust yourself more, and you know that if you screw up or if something doesn't go how you had planned, and spoiler alert, most of the time it never goes how you have planned, um, but you get the ability to choose and choose again. You talk about um, when something feels just out of reach. Mm -hmm. We even have a ritual for that. What we do. <laughs> yeah. So this is for that energy of like, oh, I got so close. Or you know that you're near something. You can feel it coming to you, but it's just not there yet. It's, it's really made for the impatient person, which is me. <laughs> and so this is a way to help either energetically speed things up or for you to go that little bit further that you hadn't realized that you had in you. So it's for both of those. And this, this particular ritual is actually based all in expanding your awareness. So your awareness in this case is actually more going into what is it you know deep and in, intrinsically within you rather than what are the thoughts, the facts, what you've been taught. It's actually going all beyond that into more of a direct download. So when something's just out of reach, you actually don't need more information. I mean, how many times have when we're about to make a choice and we don't know what to choose, we go to our friends, we go to our colleagues, we go to people that we admire, we go to Facebook and we ask them to make the choice for us. So instead, this is my invitation for you to not go external, but go internal. So now just to, um, to make it more real, you have a cranky ritual. I do. <laughs> I think we you all get. Need a I can't imagine ritual. you get cranky. I do get cranky. My my girlfriend would testify <laughs> to, to that. Definitely, there's you know with the rebellious side comes the feisty and the cranky side too. Um, the good thing is that blows over pretty quickly, especially with a ritual like this. So most of us especially if you've done any deep work, you will find some suppressed anger down in there somewhere. And that is scary when it comes up because, you know, especially as women, we're taught that that is not appropriate. It's not appropriate to be angry. It's not appropriate to get cranky, to have something irritate you. You have to swing by and be at peace with everything that comes your way. And I'm calling that out. I don't why, think that's okay why anymore. Can't we just, why can't we just meditate? <laughs> no, it's not having that. <laughs> it leads so, us to your rebellious streak ritual, because I've heard you describe yes. yourself many times as rebellious. Yes. So how old were you when you realized that you were rebellious? I think I was born knowing I was rebellious. <laughs> and um, it, did, it took me a while to acknowledge it, um, but it's it just started sneaking sneaking out into my life in different ways and then i would say over the last maybe five or six years i've just embraced it fully um well you wrote a book about it i did <laughs> <laughs> um now one of the topics that's near and dear to a lot of my clients is the idea generator ritual can you take us through one. a sample of how you can generate ideas Yes. So for me, this is also where a little bit of humility comes into it because I don't personally believe that we come up with ideas. I believe that ideas come to us. They're an entity to themselves and they're going around going like, hey, will you make me? I'm looking for someone to help me be brought to life. And so for me, the idea generator is actually about walking yourself into that space where you are open to receiving ideas and you are allowing new ones to come through and you're consciously choosing what ones you brought, want to bring to life. So for many creatives, you have so many ideas and you're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to die before I create these all. And that's true because there's more ideas that want to be created than there is time in the day. That's just a fact. So for me, this, this exercise brings ease in that you realize that you don't have to create everything today. It's going to be okay. <laughs> and that second, that you can actually invite new energies and ideas to come to you to be creative because it really should be from a space of play. You know, like the, 
the martyr artist since like that's over we don't we don't need that anymore to create we can enjoy creation to its fullest so it's i've heard art, uh, uh, authors talk about that an idea will just come to them yes so it's just kind of like floating in the ether and all of a sudden it comes to them and it's the idea uh for a book that if they don't take that idea somebody else is going to take that idea yeah because it will move on I mean, there's a classic example in Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Big Magic, when she talks about an idea for a very specific story set in the Amazon jungle, and it actually moves on to her friend after she dropped it. Um, and so her friend ended up actually writing that book, and were this, was their take on it slightly different? Yes, but it was, in essence, that exact same idea. That's actually the author I was thinking of. Is that? Okay, great. Yeah, I, was, I read that in one of her books, and I was like, it's too strange to, to not be true. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, which, how long did it take you to write your book? Start to finish. So, the idea told me that it wanted to be a book in March. And I was like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. And it was very clear. It was like, no, no, no. I'm going to tell you when to write. <laughs> Um, so that was incredibly frustrating for a go-getting creative. That's like, yeah, let's do all the things. So I was slowly seduced into writing this book, and I didn't really put pen to paper until May for little snippets. And then I got to work creating all the material for it over the next three months. And by September, I put down the pen. Because you kind of, uh, oddly enough, you have a writer's block ritual. I do. <laughs> <laughs> What do you very do? helpful ritual. Yes, a very helpful for authors that happen to be a very helpful ritual. What do you do when you get writer's block? Um, one of my favorite things to do actually is to first relax. Like you, you can't create when you're tense. I mean, you can, but there, then you're pouring out your own energy instead of your idea's energy, and that's how you create burnout, which is not very fun. Um, so for me. First, it's about relaxing and restoring. And then the second part of this is I fake my groove. So I will write out my words or someone else that I admire's words. And I, I, you know, I ask all my clients to do this. If you're a video or you love talking, I like call someone and have a conversation with them. If you're a painter, like draw someone else's picture, like create someone else's art. Because by doing the action, you get back into it again, and then within no time, you're you're writing your own stuff. And you're, I'm going to, you end with a, I need a drink ritual. <laughs> <laughs> it's at yeah. 730 in the morning there, so I hope you, we don't end this interview with an I need well, a drink. Well, you could still need a drink and have it be coffee. <laughs> <laughs> or tea. Exactly. So. Um, so. <clears throat> The way it is in a book, you end with cocktail recipes. I do. My wonderful friend is a great cocktail connoisseur, and she actually brought me into my own cocktail making enjoyment during lockdown, and I really wanted to add a little bit of her essence to this as a celebration. So there is a cocktail recipe in there, and but it's actually more about the energy of celebration. Um, one of the things that I had noticed at that time was I was definitely using the whole, I need a drink because I don't want to deal with this. Therefore, I will get some alcohol in my system, I will relax more, and then I will deal with it, or I won't. And I was like, hmm, that's not very conscious. So instead, let's actually look at the craving underneath this, because that's really what all the rebellious rituals are, is about being what you crave. So what I looked at there was, okay, so what is it that I really crave? I crave this relaxation. I crave this moment of beauty and celebration. And so whether you have the drink or not during this ritual is actually irrelevant. That is actually just a personal choice. But it is about creating that energy of relaxation, of having a break and celebration. Which COVID gave us a year and a half break. Yes, it did. And a whole new space for a lot of choices. Right. So I want to shift gears away from the book a second and ask you some um, Vogue has the 93 questions, a la okay. Vogue, you know, you've seen those. so there's no right or wrong. This is our just, this is just John's the, questions. So <laughs> just get a little bit more about you. Okay. What question do you ask to find out about a person? 
I ask them, when you're by yourself, what is it that you wish you did more of? So I ask you, when you're by yourself, what is it you wish you did more of? Well, I think it's more just enjoying, being more present and, and enjoying more time. I will really, say, yeah. Um, what question would you most like to know the answer to? Oh gosh, I'm not a fan of answers. So I, I'm not really sure about this one because for me, questions are all about garnering as many possibilities as possible. And as soon as you get to an answer, you stop. So I don't think I ever really do want to know the answer. What TV channel doesn't exist, but should? Um, the creative mess behind the scenes <laughs> without trauma. <laughs> Just what? when people are living in their creative mess. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good show. Um, <laughs> what, what, what's your favorite movie? Oh, that's a really hard question. Um, I have so many. But today, because I just watched it, I'm going to go with The Help. Um, what makes you laugh? Oh, so, so many things. Bad jokes. I love bad jokes, irony. If this weren't being recorded, I could make you laugh then. <laughs> okay, good. Um, what is your guilty pleasure? I don't know that I have a guilty pleasure, but I do love a daytime bath. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, um, people that complain and then don't make any choices. How do you consume content? Um, in very different ways, depending depending on my energy at the time. But most of the time, I see something and then I either look at that and see, I hate that I could do that like this, or I love that I could create that like this. Have you found any misconceptions about what it is to be an author? Many, <laughs> many. <laughs> Which are? Well, um, it's very different um, going from being a writer to an author. It's, it's amazing that you feel the same, but everyone treats you different. That's, that's the first one that I, I find hilarious because you still did the same work, but you just put it into a book and published it instead of wrote, say, many different articles and pieces that could be the same length of work. Um, the second one is that you still have to write. <laughs> After you've finished your project, you have to keep writing. Otherwise, you know, you you will no longer be yourself fully or be expressing or going further. So is there a sequel to Rebellious Rituals? Well, there is a second book, but I don't know that it's necessarily a sequel. A sequel It's going to be called Idea Wrangler. And so it's a choose your own adventure style guide to bringing an idea to life. So what it actually is, I mean, it may not be a true sequel, but it, 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 it's an expansion. It is, yes. When, when do you uh, anticipate that will be out? Next year. Next year? Um, and how can people find you on the internet? You can go to my website, RebeccaHulse.com. You can search that name on Instagram and Facebook, too. I also have a group for crazy creative entrepreneurs on Facebook, which I would... I feel like would be a great home for you guys if you listen to this podcast and you loved it. Well, uh, hang on, I'll, I'll come back, but thank you very much. It was, it was a great pleasure. Thank you, I so enjoyed being here. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed our podcast, please write a review on iTunes and tell your friends to subscribe. If you have any questions about influencers or suggestions for future episodes, email them to John at Pfeiffer at PfeifferLaw.com. Thank you for listening.